Hello, my name is John Rose. And in this video, I'm gonna take a look at how much protein do we need to gain muscle. And I'm gonna use four examples here. Two have to do with gaining pounds and the other have to do with gaining kilograms. Americans, we still haven't switched over to the metric system, so we really have trouble with this metric system. Uh, and I'm sure people with the metric system are thinking, why are we still using this outdated system? Because it really isn't a, a very efficient way to do calculations, which you'll soon see real quickly. Uh, but I'm going to start off by saying the amount of protein we need is not that much. Now, here's an interesting point. Does the 200-pound man need more protein to build a pound of muscle than a 100-pound woman? No. <laughs> Why? Because a pound of muscle is a pound of muscle is a pound of muscle. Uh, a pound of muscle is 454 grams. Now, 75% of that is water. So 113.5 grams of that is how much is protein. Now, when we look at a kilogram, that's 1,000 grams. 75% water, now it's 250 grams. So we can use these two numbers, 250, 113 and a half, to figure out how much protein do we need if we're gonna gain a pound or a kilogram per week or by month. Now, is it realistic to gain a kilogram of weight per week? For you Americans, that equates to 144 pounds a year. That's not very realistic, is it? So I'm gonna use this to illustrate at the extreme, we don't need that much. And think about that for a second. Okay, I'm gonna get into bodybuilding for the next 10 years, I'm gonna put on 144 pounds a year. <laughs> at the end of 10 years of my career, I'm gonna weigh 1,440 pounds more than I, I did when I started. Obviously not realistic. We can't build a kilogram of muscle per week, but if we looked at those numbers, remember, we're looking at 1,000 grams, 75% of water, 250 grams, now we have to consider our diets. If it's a vegetarian diet, the typical vegetarian diet, they're only uh, uh, utilizing about 85% of that. So now that 250 comes to, to 294. Now when we look at that 294, uh, uh, what does that equate to on a weekly basis? That's like 42 grams of protein per day extra, above extra. Now how can we get those 42 grams uh, of protein? Well, we can drink four of those pint juices of carrot and spinach juice. That's the easiest way to do it. We could turn to animal protein, we won't need as much, or we could turn to nuts and we'd have to eat a lot to get that much extra protein. So if we were to somehow gain 144 pounds of muscle a year consistently, that's how much protein we'd need. So it's really high and it's obviously more than we could ever do. Well, how about if we look at a kilogram per month. Now that's more realistic, isn't it? 2.2 pounds in one month. Well, if we take that 42 gram number, it's gonna come down just below 10 grams of protein extra is all we need today. So all you have to do is add one pint of carrot spinach juice 50-50 and you got all the protein that you need extra for that day to build muscle mass. Now, let's go back to the pound. Let's say I wanna build a pound of muscle per week. Is that realistic? Well, let me see, 52 pounds a year. In 10 years, I'm gonna weigh 520 pounds more than I did when I started. <laughs> let me see, uh, I don't think so. So that's also not very realistic, but look at the numbers for that. How much protein do we need? Remember, a pound of, pro a pound of muscle is 454 grams, but 75% of that's water, so the only amount of protein is 113.5. And again, when we divide 0.85, that by 0.85, that's our utilization factor, we come up with like 133 and a half. Now, what does that equate to on a daily basis? How much protein do we need every day? That's like 19 grams of protein per day extra. Two pints of carrot spinach juice will do it. That's all we need. That's all you need. A quart, a liter of carrot and spinach juice, and you can put on a pound of muscle, if you could, every week. But that's not very realistic either. How about a pound every month? Now maybe that might be a realistic number to use, isn't it? That'd be 12 pounds a year. <laughs> 10 years, 120 pounds, yeah. It might, shouldn't take that long, but let's go with that one. If I wanna build a pound of muscle a month, we had, remember we had 19 if we did it every week. Now it's gonna be less than five grams a day. That's less than a cup of carrot and spinach juice a day is all we need to gain muscle. So. 
we have to understand that there's a lot of confusion around nutrition. I remember when I first started lifting weights again. Uh, I lifted weights for all the wrong reasons when I was younger, because I was manipulated, just like you little girls were manipulated to put on makeup. I was manipulated to go out there and get some muscles. <laughs> and when I found that out, God, I go, damn it, I hate being manipulated. I ain't gonna lift no more weights. I don't want that big muscle bound look. So I didn't lift weights for about five years, but then when I started playing competitive tennis, dang that son. But then when I started playing competitive tennis, I knew I had to protect my joints. So I started lifting weights again. And I remember, according to the experts back then, in order to gain one pound of muscle, you need 2,500 extra calories. So I went by that philosophy, not knowing what to do. And I gained 20 pounds in one month. I went from 160 to 180. And, and I looked like the typical bodybuilder because I went from about 6% body fat to about 15% body fat. I was still slender, but I was big and puffy. I looked like the typical big puffy muscle, you know, no definitions, no grooves. You know, when you have, I don't, God, I don't think the, the sun, darn it, the sun wasn't shining. That's why I stopped here initially. Because when the sun's out here, I can't see very well. But you can see I don't have much subcutaneous body fat. That's why you can see definition in my, in my body. Well, if, if I had 15% body fat, you wouldn't be seeing any of this. Because it, it, it'd be filled up. It'd be like, I'd be wearing a, <laughs> a, a sweater over my muscles. So when people go on a solid food vacation and they think they're losing muscle, they might not be losing muscle. They're just losing that subcutaneous fat. So the, the muscle size might look smaller, but it, you're just losing that muscle, that, that fat that goes around it. So uh, the point that happened to me, obviously, is I just went from, again, 6% body fat to about 15%. Most of what I gained, about 15 pounds, that 20 pounds, was, was fat. Sure, I put on some muscle, but I didn't like the way it looked. And of course, I realized what I was doing, and I finally got that extra, extra fat back off of me. So we don't need all these extra calories to gain muscle. All you have to do is resistance exercise and consume adequate amount of calories. Darn it, the sunshine. Oh well, what can I say? I guess perhaps I should just end this video because I know when this sun is blaring out like it is, I can't even be seen. Maybe I'll just finish the video down here. No, <laughs> find me a little corner over here. Here you go. I, can you see me now? Uh, anyway, uh, I just did a video moments ago on, on, on losing muscle mass on a juice fast. And what happens with most people is you, you're just losing that subcutaneous fat. I remember when I first started playing competitive tennis, one of the interesting things that I noticed was my body fat percentage going down lower and lower. I started seeing dimples and definitions in places I never saw before. And darn it, you can't, I can't, uh, <laughs> you can't see with this darn sunshine in my face. But if you look on my other video, you'll notice that I have a dimple in my sternum. You have, have a dimple in my, my throat. I didn't have those with higher body fat percentages. So as you start losing body fat, you'll see that. And then actually, what's really interesting, you can tell what your body fat percentage is for men, is what's on the back, the small of the back right here. This is how I know my body fat percentage is low. I can't pinch anything right here. And guys, when you start gaining weight, fat, this is where you'll be able to pinch. I can't pinch anything. I can't even pinch anything right now. And what's interesting is if I eat the wrong food and fill up my colon, the fat that's inside here goes out to the side. It looks like I got love handles. Like in one day, where are these love handles coming up? It's the fat in here that goes out to the side. So the point here is you got to get excited about a solid food vacation. You got to get excited about giving your body a vacation and not have to work. And again, you can build muscle mass on this and you shouldn't be losing any muscle if you consume everything you need. So go down below and watch my seminar if you haven't done this yet on how to do a solid food vacation. And when you do, I guarantee you, my friends, you're in for a treat.